Love is help. Love is helping. Love is, is when someone loves someone. Love is a feeling that somebody cares about you. Love is trustworthiness, honesty, and friendship. People that you really, really like. Love is friendship and family. Love is generous. Love is sacrifice when you sacrifice somebody that you love. Love is happiness. Love is being nice to other people. I love God because he's there for us when we need to talk to him. He made this world. I like God because he made the world. God made us. I love God because he created us and cares for us. Because, because he, he made, made the world. Because he made us. God is always by our side. I love God because he made the world. Because he helps me when I need it. I love God because he sacrifices one and only son. Good morning. Good morning. We want to welcome you here this Valentine's Day as we celebrate the love of Christ, as we celebrate and rejoice in the good news that Christ has given and shown to each one of us. Uh, it's a great way to begin our service this morning as we saw uh, the Clyde River Sunday School sharing uh, what is love, the meaning of love as they share it with us. And it's a reminder to us of the importance that love plays in our daily lives and in our walk with Christ. Special welcome to those who are joining us on uh, YouTube or on Facebook, and we welcome you here to uh, Burnside Church as you celebrate with us here at Central Parish with Canoe Cove and Clyde River Congregations. Uh, just a few announcements to draw to your attention. Um, annual meeting for Clyde River will be tomorrow, uh, 7 o'clock here at the church. The weather doesn't sound great again for tomorrow evening, but... Fingers crossed we'll be able to get our annual meeting in, so that's tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock here at the church. Men's and women's group will be meeting this week. Men's group will be meeting Thursday at Canoe Cove Church at 10.30. The women's group, 10 o'clock on Tuesday here at Clyde River. Uh, Bible study for the church begins on Thursday, uh, February the 18th, 1 o'clock at Canoe Cove Church, and then Sunday, next Sunday evening, February 21st at 7 o'clock here at Clyde River Church. Uh, it's going to be a hodgepodge uh, of Bible studies this, uh, this winter or spring. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Church of Christ, our sister denomination. What is the Church of Christ and uh, their beliefs, their background, their history? Uh, so that's going to be this week. And then the following week, we're going to be looking at uh, baptisms and uh, communion. What does the church, uh, churches, Christian churches believe concerning uh, baptism and communion? Why do some churches baptize this way and not another way? So we're going to be talking about that. So that's for the next couple of weeks. We'll be talking about those, uh, those ideas and having that discussion uh, in our Bible study. Uh, pennies from heaven. Uh, we want to thank everyone who's donated thus far. There's been a lot of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters coming in. I uh, want to continue as we uh, continue to help the children and the young people in Thuri in Kenya. So our young folks here at the Sunday School are collecting the pennies that will be then shipped and shared uh, with the children in Thuri, Kenya. Um, the other announcements, uh, you can go to our Facebook page to find them. We do want to extend birthday uh, greetings, uh, at least online birthday greetings. Uh, John Taylor is uh, uh, celebrating a birthday today, actually, on Valentine's Day. So uh, congratulations to John. And yesterday, uh, Larry Kennedy had a special birthday. Uh, it was... Uh, Starts with a six and ends with a five. So, uh, Larry, uh, happy birthday from us here in the congregation and enjoy uh, that special birthday. And we trust God's hand of blessing and healing will continue to be upon you uh, in the next coming weeks and months. 
We'll join together now as we share our call to worship. God said, let light shine in the darkness. Lord, shine in the darkness. We see the glory of God in the face of Christ. Let us follow the light of Christ together. Let us worship God with thanks and grace. Let's turn to him now. Let us pray. Gracious, eternal, and loving God, to this world you reveal yourself. You reveal your presence in ways both great and small. In the quietness, in the loudness, in our homes, in our churches, in our schools, in our hospitals. Your presence is what guides us. Your presence is what calms us. Your presence is what gives us that sense of peace, that sense of steadiness, even as life seems so unsteady. We come on this Valentine's Day rejoicing in the gift of love, the love you have shown to us in your Son, the love you call us to share with one another. Help us to celebrate that wondrous gift that love is to each one of us. Abide with us in our time of worship. May this be a time of us expressing our love and thankfulness to you. May we lift our voices in praise. May we open our hearts and minds to your word. And may we continually be astounded and amazed by your grace that is seen through Jesus Christ. We ask all of these things in his name. Amen. We're going to join together our hearts as we lift our voices in praise to God, as we glorify his name, as we sing the hymn, Jesus Loves Me. share God's word together, we're going to find wisdom in his word to us this day. And as we gather as his people seeking his direction, let's turn to him in prayer, asking for his guidance. Wondrous and gracious God, we thank you, for you are the source of all wisdom. You are the one who guides, who leads, who gently nudges us. Guide us now this morning hour as we hear your scriptures, as we hear them read, as we take time to interpret them and to apply them to our lives. 
For you call your word living. You call your word truth. And because of that, we know that in hearing your word broken, our lives will be made stronger. Our walk will be made sure. And our lives will be drawn closer to you. Help us to hear your word anew this morning out. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading this morning is taken from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with thought and every day of sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foe will rejoice in my fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has delivered to me. Our next portion of scripture is taken from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 3, and then 8 to 13. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that I can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see but a poor reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these, is love. Amen. And may the word of God touch our hearts and minds this day. May we rejoice in the good news that it brings to us. And may it be a reminder to us of the depth of God's love for his people. We're going to join our voices again, celebrating God's love for us as we share together in the hymn selection this morning, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Thank you.
So in case you forgot, it is Valentine's Day today. And if you haven't already got your... I see. If you haven't already got your Valentine's chocolates, you're in trouble. Uh, Walmart's pretty much cleared out. Uh, shoppers, not a lot of selection there either. Just telling you. Uh, so if you haven't got them yet, there is plenty of Easter eggs still available. Uh, the shelf is now filled with chocolate Easter eggs. So there you go. Just offering that out to you. But it is interesting because it is Valentine's Day and I did some interesting uh, looking online for some uh, statistics and figures. Any guesses on how many roses are sold today? A lot. A lot. Yes, a lot. It's correct. 250 million roses are passed and shared and bought today. Chocolate. My favorite. Americans spend approximately $500 million on chocolate for Valentine's Day. That equates to 58 million pounds of chocolate. Worldwide, it's over a billion dollars spent in chocolate for Valentine's Day. I would say money well spent for everyone on that one. <laughs> and then there is the Valentine card. Any guesses how many Valentine cards are exchanged on Valentine's Day? Rough idea. Any guesses? How many? A billion? No, not quite, but it, it is climbing. It's actually 200 million Valentine's cards, which astounds me uh, that that many cards are exchanged, but 200 million Valentine's cards. And the most fascinating thing I found in the statistics that were shared is that on average, men spend double the amount of money that women do on Valentine's Day. <laughs> So there you go. <laughs> but it is interesting because Valentine's Day is the one day a year where everything focuses on love. The idea of love. What is love? It allows us as a, almost as a global community to take time to stop and focus on love. The importance of that four-letter word that is shared across the globe. The importance that love has for each one of us. And the reality is, love is part and parcel of who we are as people. We are created, and it's in our DNA that we are to love. We want to receive love, we want to share love, we want to give love. And without that love, we are less than. We feel alone. And that's one of the hardest things for us as humans, to be alone. And by being alone, I mean being isolated, not have that connection, not have that relationship with anyone around us. To not know that there is someone there who cares for us, who loves us, who stands by us. Love is a powerful word. Love can be a trigger word for people. For some people, when they hear love, they become very upset. They become upset because they have lost love. Or because they feel their love has been broken or shattered. Or they feel as though no one loves them. That can weigh heavily on a person. To the point that love becomes a four-letter word. In our society, love is spoken and shared. In our society, love is often talked about. We talk about love all the time, but there are times where we find it easier to say, I love a chocolate bar, than it is to say to somebody, I love you. And it's a reminder to us that love is that personal connection. Love is about the individual. It is about us as a fellowship, as a body. And as Christians, love is essential to who we are and the ministry we represent for Jesus Christ.
And yet we have this dichotomy between the world around us and the church. Both speak of love. Both speak of love in a positive, powerful manner. And yet, what we're going to see this morning is that Paul speaks of love in a very different way than the world does. And so I was trying to come up with an example of, of a TV show uh, that talks about love. I was going back and forth. I was debating, and, and I came upon one, and then uh, somebody else suggested another one to me. Uh, they had suggested I Love Lucy, which would have been great, uh, a little before my time, but still uh, a, a very good TV show. But I decided to stick with something that I could remember growing up with. And this is a TV show that deals with love. Uh, and again, just before Fred plays the clip, uh, I apologize because I'm pretty sure this theme song will be sticking in your head for the rest of the day. So we'll hear the theme song. Exciting and new Come aboard We're expecting you And love Life's sweetest reward Let it flow It floats back to you Something for everyone Set a course for adventure Your mind on a new romance And love Won't hurt anymore It's an open smile On a friendly shore when they actually had TV shows on uh, Saturday uh, evening. But The Love Boat was on from 1977 to 1986. Nine years. Four, it, had, it had 245 episodes. What was fascinating about The Love Boat, what made it, I think, such a hit, was the number of guest stars, as you saw on there. And that was just a small snippet on one show. The number of guest stars and movie stars they had who wanted to be on this show. And in part, it was because of the way the show was set up. On the Love Boat, there was always three separate storylines for every one-hour episode. There was a comedic one, a romantic one, and a dramatic one. They very rarely wavered from that. And it was always the romantic one that drew the people in. That sense of adventure, that sense of being on, well before the pandemic, the sense of being on a boat, floating around, enjoying the sights, enjoying all the different ports of call. Love was in the air. And it always amazed me that from the start of the episode to the end of the episode, every week, the people would fall in love. It always worked out for them. But we know that that's not the case. We know that love isn't that simple, that straightforward, that easy. We love the love boat because it, it speaks to us. That sense of love, that sense of passion. But we know it's not that easy, that straightforward. We know that love can be difficult. Love can be a struggle. Love, true love, 
can face obstacles and difficulties. Paul, in his letter to the church at Corinth, speaks of love, but love in a very different way than we saw week after week of the love book. This morning, we shared that portion of Scripture from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 3, and then verses 8 to 13. And I omitted reading verses 4 to 7. Verses 4 to 7 are the verses that you probably know very well. Love is patient, love is kind. But I left those out because a lot of times it's the other verses in this chapter that are omitted. And yet it's those verses that are so important to us, that give us a better understanding of what love truly is in the Christian sense. Paul begins his letter to the church at Corinth by saying, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy, and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Paul starts off by getting our attention. Because we think that if we worship, if we have faith to move mountains, if we can heal, if we have the gift of prophecy, if we can understand all mysteries, if we can do all these things, then we have it together as Christians. Then we have it all set up. After all, this is a checklist of things we should want as Christians. We have faith. We have the ability to worship. We have a, a sense that we give to others in need. This is a checklist. These first three verses are really a checklist to what and how we are to live as Christians. And yet Paul pops that balloon. He says, that's great. If you can do all that, wonderful. But if there's no love behind it, if there's no passion behind it, then it means nothing. How hard would that be for the, for the people in Corinth? How hard would that be for us today to hear? The sense that if there's not love behind what we do, if there's not love behind our action, if there's not love behind our faith, if there's not love behind the voice that we lift up and praise to God, it means nothing. In other words, Paul's saying, you're better off not doing it. What Paul is getting us to understand as he begins to write about love is that without love, there is nothing. It doesn't matter what you do, because if love isn't there, we're missing out. Nothing else matters without love. And he does that, he says that because he knows that's what Jesus commands us to do. He commands us to love one another, to love each other, to love our neighbors, to love our enemies, just as Christ loves us. This is a love that speaks volumes. This is a love that transforms. This is a love that changes lives. Because this is a love that's rooted in our relationship with God. That sense that we are love. I talked earlier about that, the idea that as, as human beings, love is part of who we are. Love is an essential part of who we are. And that is because we are created in the image of God. And scripture tells us that God is love. So if God is love... It makes sense that we are love. And without love, we are missing. Without love, we are missing a vital part of who we are as Christians. Jesus talks of love to the point that when he was asked, what's the essential thing we need to know? What command did God give to us that was most important? Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. 
And equally important, to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus urged his followers and continues to urge us to love God and to love people. It's part and parcel. It is the backbone of Scripture. It is the backbone of the Christian message. This idea of love. And without it, Scripture falls apart. Without it, the cross disappears. Without it, we have nothing. That is how important love is. That's why Jesus made it such a high priority. As we see in John 13, chapter 13 to chapter 17, throughout that portion of Scripture, as Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, as Jesus was preparing for his own death, he met with his disciples, he talked with his disciples, and over the course of the evening, it tells us that Jesus used the love word no less than 32 times. That tells us how important love is to Jesus. The importance of connectedness, the importance of reaching out, the importance of being in sync with what God intends and how much God loves us is how much we are to love one another. We often overlook these first three verses of 1 Corinthians. We like to jump to the middle section, but we need to remember these three verses anchor us so that we do not drift. It anchors us and reminds us that without love, we are drifting. Without love, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter how successful you are. It doesn't matter how many degrees you own. It doesn't matter uh, how big the house is you live in. It doesn't matter how much you give to the poor. Nothing matters if it's not rooted in love. That's how powerful love is. That's how important love is. And that's why we need to understand that as Christians, we are called to love that deeply and that passionately, just as Christ did. As we grow, Paul tells us a little bit later, as we grow, we come to a deeper understanding of what that love is. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. We come to a deeper understanding of love as we grow older. We come to a deeper understanding of love knowing and experiencing the world around us. It would be interesting to talk to the kids in 10 years and see how they would define love then. I wonder if their definitions, their view of love would change. In fact, I'm pretty sure it would. Just as our definition of love has changed, as we have grown older, as we have experienced the ups and downs of life. But what doesn't change is the importance of love and the root of love found in Jesus Christ. Because that's what anchors us. That's what gives us our strength. That is what we have the cross for. The cross is our anchor. It's a reminder to us of the love that God has shown to us in Jesus Christ. And as we grow, we come to a better appreciation and understanding of what that love costs. Because love costs Love isn't easy. Love is about sacrifice. Love is about stepping out in faith. Love is about, and we can fill in the blank. We each have our own definition of what love is and what love isn't. But what's interesting is how Paul sums up this chapter. Now, these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. 
it catches us off guard a little. Faith, hope, and love. Now we would think faith would be number one. Or maybe we think hope would be number one. After all, without faith or without hope, we don't have anything. But Paul tells us it is love. The greatest of these is love. Why? Because without love, we cannot have faith. And without faith, we do not have hope. Love is the greatest because love is Christ. Love is seen through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. Right there we see why love is the greatest. Because in love, God sent his son. Now that leads us to the chunk of scripture we didn't read this morning. Those verses that describe love, those verses that speak of love so poignantly, so beautifully, that people inside and outside the church often refer to this portion of scripture. And you hear it shared at weddings over and over and over and over again. It is the go-to passage to talk about love. And in this portion of scripture, Paul describes love in a beautiful way. But we miss something in our English translation that's found in the Greek. Because in the Greek, all 15 of the terms that are used in this portion of scripture to describe love are verbs. They're action words. That changes the definition of love. And it gives us that slant as Christians as to what love is about. Love simply isn't a feeling. Love isn't something that can come and go. Love in its basic form, in its Christian form, is about action. It is about acting. It is about doing. Love is only love when it acts. Love is active, not passive. Love moves. Love moves. This portion of scripture is a powerful one because it helps us come to a deeper understanding of what love is about. Paul describes love in a beautiful way. He reminds us that it is about acting. It is about us doing. But... Paul also writes it as a challenge to us. Now, maybe nobody has ever asked you to do this, but maybe they have. If you were to read verses 4, 5, 6, and 7, and insert your name in, in the places where love is, have you ever heard how it sounded? Stephen is patient. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> Stephen is kind. Stephen does not envy. Stephen does not boast. Stephen is not proud. Stephen is not rude. Stephen is not self-seeking. Stephen is not easily angered. Stephen keeps no record of wrongs. Stephen does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Stephen always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, Stephen never fails. That doesn't quite fit, does it? Sort of does, <laughs> but doesn't really. The reality is none of us could get through this portion of scripture and not say that, well, there's some things there that I struggle with. That's the reality of Paul when he wrote this. He said it and wrote it 
so that he gave us what ultimately is to be loved, what we are to shoot for, what we are to aim for. And so sometimes, if we need a reality check, it's good to go back and read that with our names in it. But let me read it another way and see if this fits back. Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not boast. Jesus is not proud. Jesus is not rude. He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered. He keeps no record of wrongs. Jesus does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Jesus always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Jesus never fails. That fits a lot better. And that's what Paul is getting at. He's reminding us that as Christians, we are to follow Christ. And Christ is our example in love. He's our example to act, to live, and to be love in the world around us. It's a challenge. Paul knew it. But it's one that we cannot give up on. Because the world needs love. The world needs to be reminded that they are not in this by themselves. I don't know whether you've ever noticed on the love boat, when they do the introduction of the crew, it's your ship's captain. It's your ship's doctor. The show had a way of drawing you in and making you part of it. Love in the very best sense, in the biblical sense, is God drawing us in, reminding us that he is our God. He has sent his son so that we might be his sons and daughters. So that we might experience a love that can never be taken away. A love that isn't limited to one day. A love that is more precious than all the chocolate in the world. And that's pretty precious for me. It's a love that is rooted in the cross. A love that is rooted in God's action and love for us. Let's turn to him now. Let's pray together. Wonders God, we thank you for the gift of love. We thank you for the passion that you share with us, your son. We thank you that you are willing to give all for us. And it's a reminder, a very real reminder of just how precious we are to you. Help us to love with that same passion. Help us to see the gifts that you have given to us and to rejoice in those gifts. Help us to be rooted in love so that whatever we do, we do out of love. We thank you for the people you have brought into our lives. Those people that remind us that we are special that we are not forgotten, that we are cared for, that we are loved. We thank you for the passion that they bring to us, the joy and the happiness that they bring to us. And we know, oh God, that during the pandemic, we were perhaps made aware more than we ever could have imagined just how precious those relationships are, just how important it is to remain connected to one another. And how important it is to remain connected to you. We thank you for the gift of love that you have shared in Jesus Christ. We thank you for the cross. For the victory that has been won there. For the forgiveness that has been poured out there. That love is a love that satisfies. That transforms. But also that challenges us to move forward. Help us to remember that you call us to action in love. Forgive us when we sit passively by. Help us to get involved. Help us to stay involved. For you call us to be a people of action.
and not simply words. We pray, O oh God, for our brothers and sisters this day. We think, O oh God, of the family of the late Catherine McLeod, and we ask for your hand of healing and comfort to be upon the family. We pray, O oh God, for Arthur, for Fern, for Lonnie, for Larry, and for Dougie, that you will continue to surround them in their walk, in their journey, that your presence will be a source of encouragement and hope to them. We think of Wendy and we pray, O oh God, that you'll watch over her and Ken as they journey to Halifax this week. Guide the hands of the doctors and nurses. Continue to watch over them and pour out your peace that passes all understanding upon them. May we love one another as you have first loved us. And may we show that love to one another this day and in the days to come. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to conclude our service this morning as we sing to God's glory uh, the hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. Hi. Uh, you didn't give me time to announce this. Oh. Birthday. Shelby, this is Shelby's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Shelby. <laughs> <laughs>
hear that story. That story of God's amazing love. That love that has transformed. That love that continues to move in our lives. That love that calls us to action. May we go into the world knowing that we are called to love as Christ has loved us. And may we go with the grace, peace, and love of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit with us both now and forevermore. Amen.